Um, but in reality, I think what we really want to do is build sort of the, the set of services that sort of spans that space. And there aren't that many of them in their most, most primitive form. And if we could build out those basic services, and maybe I don't have these right, so I'm just suggesting on the, the, the columns here, we have things where you could create a data collection, you could um, publish it in some way, you could link to publications, in fact, of traditional publications, and we have publishers here as well. You can store it. That came up a lot. There is no place really to put things in a generic sense. There may be specific repositories for specific domains. NCAR is a great example of earth, earth science uh, data uh, services and so on. But and you, you want to have that, and you want to have the ability to discover it, and maybe I've left off a couple of things, or maybe I didn't even get the right names, but the point is, there aren't that many basic functions that we really need to have to begin to show what this can do, but then they have to be hosted and supported, ultimately, at a national level, at a production quality, and, and all of that sort of thing. Um, and then you have different kinds of communities, and in fact, uh, in a number of these, in fact, all of these communities are represented in this room, and some of these uh, rows came out by uh, some of the discussions we had last night at dinner and so on. So what, what I was going to suggest, at least as food for thought, and uh, Joel's going to then lead a discussion of, of how we might kind of organize ourselves going forward, but I wanted to put something very concrete on the table. Um, if we organize ourselves along the lines of groups that can either build out some of these kinds of services or, or maybe there, there might be four or five versions of services of each of these things that people kind of have at their disposal that have been working on for years or working well in one community or you know, maybe it could be adopted by another, that we could sort of organize ourselves along the builders, the columns, the columns in which we build things, uh, that is the, the broader sort of science scenarios, and then some specific kinds of scenarios that in the very short term could actually um, demonstrate in a pilot sense what could be done on those services, right? So for example, the materials genome, I, I spoke with a, a number of you last night. If we could, in, in fact, I, I'm particularly motivated because I had Cyrus Wadia from OSTP wrote to me day before yesterday and said, at the NDS meeting in Boulder, can you all, could you organize yourselves and agree to actually support something that they, they could announce as part of the materials genome initiative, the third uh, anniversary of the materials genome, um, that, that the NDS is going to at least develop a work stream to build services to support the Materials Genome Initiative. And I'll remind you, the head of that in a sense is, is the president because he actually announced the Materials Genome Initiative, so he would be the head of our working group, let's say. <laughs> so, so anyway, um, and so in talking to a number of you last night, it seemed like, well, maybe we could actually demonstrate the ability of materials groups to uh, use a, a national prototype service, and we sort of even saw some of this demonstrated yesterday, to create a data collection, to get a DOI, to get a, um, a, an ORCID ID to identify the authors of the data, to um, submit a paper, say, to one of the Elsevier, APS, or other journals, uh, and then have them actually say, uh, well, maybe, maybe they don't have it, in fact. Maybe they don't have a DOI at all. And so to ask the journals to say, could you work with us in a pilot where you would say, if a, a, an article is submitted that's a materials article in a certain class, you would ask the authors, could you provide a DOI for the data? And if they don't have it, say, well, there's a pilot program, the National Data Service is standing up, you know, you, you could get it there. I mean, maybe we could talk about something like that. And then um, to, uh, to then have a place to store it. So at NTSA, for example, we could commit a certain amount of data that could be, I mean, uh, a storage space, let's say a petabyte, where we could just say, for now, this is where we'll put it. Uh, we promise we'll find a, a longer term solution to it, but just to get a pilot program, we'll get this started. So in other words, to just put the building blocks together in a coherent way, not just to build these things out, but to have them l driven in particular by some s particular scenarios. And so they're I've talked to a number of the astronomers in the room. Yeah, you know, we could do something in astronomy. Uh, Haystack is here, uh, and there's some uh, people from the uh, various education schools could talk together. What could we do there, a specific kind of scenario? So I would just leave it at that. Also, while well, we heard civil engineering last night, very inspiring kind of idea about what we could do with data from uh, the Department of Transportation and so on. And of course, EarthCube and the geosciences. You're already got a full head of steam, 27 workshops and so on. So surely there's something we could say, could those activities be 
sort of also used to drive some of what we're doing here. So that's just a suggestion. There could be others. There could be different columns, different, uh, different rows. But I would just suggest when we come out of here at the end of this meeting, if we are organized at least along the lines of are there groups you could see yourselves fitting in some of these boxes in this matrix to help build some of this out, and then we could actually try to prototype this out and, and, and do this. Now, we at the moment don't have any specific funding for this, but in, in my experience, if you start doing something that looks really compelling, the funding does actually arrive. If you have to work for it, you have to work with agencies. And there are things we can do. We could write, immediately, we could write rapid proposals to NSF along some of these disciplinary lines or along, you know, on, you know, different ways you could do it. Or we could ask for supplements to existing grants, or we can submit unsolicited proposals. I mean, I, having worked there for a long time, I know unsolicited proposals are taken just as serious as, as solicited ones. And there's sort of a certain cycle, which is around, say, July and August, the proposals are in, and they're reviewed, and they look good, and there's spend out money. You know, it's possible that uh, people can find funding for things if they're supported. So you have to really talk to program officers and so on. So I mean, other agencies work in a similar way. So I think there are ways we can sort of bootstrap ourselves uh, pretty quickly, actually, if we want to. So I'll leave it at that. Super. So um, thank you, Ed. And um, here's the plan. The um, conversation that we're going to have is a conversation in two parts. Part one is going to sort of step to the mountaintop and talk about the long-term vision a conversation that was started in the breakouts yesterday afternoon and that in a sense has been going on in different forms at the breaks in the hallways and leading up to this meeting. I'm going to suggest that we only spend about 20 minutes, maybe 25, uh, about 10 at your tables and about 10 as a full group, adding to that conversation. It won't be fully completed, but we just want to crystallize it a bit further. Then uh, part two, we'll start before the break and finish after the break. And the idea, so in part one, which we're about to go to, is a conversation first at your tables and then as a full group. If the National Data Service is fantastically successful, and it's the year 2025, and we're reconvening here in Boulder to celebrate fantastic success, what are we celebrating having done? So that's the kind of where are we going long-term vision of success part of the conversation. The second part is to actually do exactly what Ed was suggesting, which is to say in the next one or two years, if you had some discretionary effort to contribute to NDS, where would you like to focus that effort? And there's a matrix, it's either primarily in a functional domain, which is the categories he listed plus others or changes in the wording. Once the group forms, you can have license to adjust the label that defines who you are with applications in different areas or in a disciplinary area with applications into different functional tasks. But here's what we're going to do. Before the break, we're going to shape this list to see if there's any categories to add or adjust. And after the break, when you come back, we're going to have signs posted with the names of the different categories. There's kind of not, there isn't really walls to put them on, so we're going to actually write the categories on big flip chart sheets and put them on the tables. And we'll tell you which tables have which ones. And you'll vote with your feet. If there's at least three people interested in a topic at a table, you've got a discussion group on that topic to dive in into any of these pieces. But we're not just doing it as a um, idle exercise. The plan is to do it um, as a discussion group in which you actually are task oriented. So you'll have about a half an hour, um, well actually about 20-25 minutes, and the idea will be that in that time you should say, well what is it in that domain that would be a good pilot building block kind of activity that would be worth considering. You're not actually committing to it, but you're a step more than just idle discussion. Um, and if you have time, what do you see as benefits or risks? What do you see as timing milestones or resources? So it's the beginning of outlining a pilot project. 
And the idea here is that when we're done, we'll have a menu of potential pilot projects that could go forward, um, possibly uh, initiated and led by the discussion group, but certainly potentially drawing others who get excited about it. So that's the plan. Does it make sense? If so, let's do dive in on part one, which is circulated at the tables are the results from the stakeholder survey um, in terms of what would success look like in 2025. Um, so those are kind of thought starters. You're not limited to those, but we're not starting at zero. The idea is at your table, if you don't already know the people, make sure you introduce yourselves and begin the conversation if you had to sort of crystallize your elevator speech for what would success be for the National Data Service, what would it be? Go for it. Ray, is that type big enough to read?
Okay, let me have your attention for a minute. We're going to continue the discussion, but we're going to energize it in the following way. We're going to have these two tables join together and share with each other what they've been talking about and see how the conversation can multiply. We're going to have these two tables join together and multiply. These two tables are going to connect. These two tables will connect. These two tables will connect. Uh, we'll have these two tables, he actually these two tables here, these two and these two. The point now is meet in the space between your tables, continue the conversation, but with inputs of three or four more people. Go for it. Five more minutes. Be bold. What does success look like in the year 2025?
In about one minute, we're going to ask each table to pick one item to report out as a thought starter that is an element of success. Think about what you want to crystallize or highlight. Okay, Ray, why don't we start with this table over on the right. If we could, finish up the sentence or the mo the whatever's being said at this moment. We're going to try to continue the conversation as a full group. What I'd like to do is we'll start with this table on the right. We'll work our way across the room. I know you discussed a number of three or four different elements of success. Pick one uh, and uh, we'll, we'll sort of construct a list of what you see as things in the year 2025, a lot will happen between now and then, that would represent fantastic success. Go for it. So we would, like to, we would like to add one on the vertical and one on the horizontal. And on the vertical, we would like to add life sciences. OK, um, hold that thought. Um, I'll, I'll do that, but I want to also get, that's really, in a sense, the next part of our conversation. Ah, so I'll, we anticipate. I'll, I'll do that um, here. And then on the horizontal, don't uh, we, I think um, education public policy function, where those, all those, quote, quote, those question marks were? Yep. OK, well, that's good. You're actually anticipating the next step in our conversation. But let's come back to success. Success would be, uh, now let me read this, a long tail repository where any discipline could add data with, along with its metadata that was um, carefully culturally described, the functions of adding the data and extracting the data that had security and privacy conditions built into the metadata so that it could be extracted with the same conditions necessary to its input. OK, um, that actually covers a couple of different elements of success. Um, but thank you. Let's go to the next table. What yeah. would you add? I think ours was sort of a variant of that, but more focused on the result. You know, it was the same sort of focus on long tail repository. But success would be if we've dramatically accelerated research discovery through the use of such a long tail repository. And those, everything you described may be preconditions for that to be possible. But even if we had that repository, but in practice nobody actually used it, that would not be success. Right? So it's sort of how do we foster that reuse of that long tail data for accelerating discovery across various disciplines? Great. And by the way, as people go forward, if someone has already said something, we don't need to repeat it. If you want to amend or modify it um, to take into account your discussions, you can do that. Or we can add additional dimensions. Thank you. Next. Uh, so first, I'll, I'll register that it, um, in a group of eight, for each to have two minutes to express some contribution is a 16-minute exercise. So um, <laughs> there's this issue about timing here. Um, we talked about a number of things, which made it we, so we didn't form a, a single cogent sentence. But um, and I'm not sure we all agree on what I'm going to say, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, that we create a single place to go uh, that is well known 
and it is where one can get access to any service or resource necessary with respect to data. It may not all be provided by that, that's a sort of corollary, but it's where I go to find it, and I don't need to think about knowing more than one place. One of the most important reasons to have a na you know, national data service or a national science data repository is to enhance data reuse and, uh, uh, you know, and uh, advance uh, uh, the ca cause of uh, uh, scientific uh, reproducibility. Now, I'm going to record that, but I did say one item per table. So, <laughs> um, so you, this, this table is um, skilled in getting two items on the chart. Let's go to this one here. OK, this is a uh, sentence that has many semicolons in it. <laughs> All scientists know where to put their data and how to document it. It's as simple as creating a web page to document, publish, and preserve data. And data sharing is the expected normal outcome of research. This is based Slow down. <laughs> I can send you this, Joel. OK. There's a national infrastructure for long-term preservation and access with a business model that's defined, accepted, and in place such that the long tail will no longer be a concern and access can be provided through the programming languages and APIs of choice of scientists. Sorry, one more. Semicolon. NDS services are seen as essential for research and a routine part of doing research. Super. And I appreciate your sending it all, but at least the others get a sense of it um, for the conversation going forward. Let's go back here. Okay, the, the back here. Um, we had a incredibly similar to what, what Bob said, but slightly a different uh, take on it was, I think we had five things, but I think the top one was that there's been a culture change. That it, it's simply clear that data are a critical part of the scientific process and that the NDS is what everyone uses to, uh, to to do their data activities, and so I'm paraphrasing because I have many more words here. But you know, sharing, publishing, discovery, and it's just well understood, simple. It's part of the culture. Every child uses it. <laughs> Super. <laughs> Next, go ahead. Uh, I think our consensus was that we would have science-driven science that is informed by data, where data is, uh, we already like this one, by default preserved and accessible, and most importantly, used. And where the conversation in 2025 is about exploiting the data we have better, not about storing it, accessing it. That's a given. The next challenge then is how do we get it used more? And our success stories are discoveries that this thing made possible. Super. Thank you. And by the way, at the break, if anyone has further edits or adjustments to the notes, don't hesitate to come up and share them. OK. Um, in our group, it's, it's 2025, June 13, um, Friday morning. <laughs> so here we see uh, data itself is a first class citizen, just like publications. Data management practices are taught as a first-class discipline. So that data Wait, who said just as we teach statistics? Oh, is that what I heard? I didn't or oh, taught? I am just asking. You, oh, you like that? I was never a do you want to add it? Okay. I, I didn't. Um, I, I heard. As a I, first class discipline. Uh huh. Um, and um, so that data are shared, discoverable, 
reusable and preserved through a distributed ecosystem of repositories. Oh, oh yeah, no. Um, we have one more concept to, to add. <laughs> um, all right, go ahead. It's, it's, a, it's the same concept. You don't need to put in a separate bullet, I don't think. Okay. Data is a first class citizen, just like publications. Data has the same importance, so maybe right after publications. Uh, data has uh, the same uh, importance as HPC. Or perhaps more. At least, at least the same priority as HPC in the exascale area, right? And then, and then the, the, the educational and cultural practice, the, the education part of it. So I, it's a first class citizen across all of these areas. It's not right now. No, that's all good. Last table. Uh, so I think our conversations are similar to the, the last two or three, um, kind of variations on the theme of uh, data management as something that's taken for granted and not uh, needing to be the focus of, of as much conversation and sort of uh, uh, you know angst maybe that we have now um, and so components of that are, are the funding agencies you know funded as a matter of course data management plans are produced and are actionable as a matter of course um, I think another good example was uh, you know 20 years ago in proposals you would specify which networks you're going to use to exchange data now that's just again taken for granted you don't need to specify how that works um, so there's sort of the pieces of it that are very exposed now that we need to specify to a high degree are, are whether they're taken for granted or they're just um, uh, it, um, um, sort of ubiquitous enough that they're not needing to be specified to the degree that they are now. Okay. In a minute, we're going to shift to phase two, which is moving to set the stage for the action items. But first, I just want to open it up. We took one or two items from each table. Um, as you look at the data, so to speak, um, you said a long tail repository, um, dramatically accelerating discovery, creating a place that's well known, um, that everyone does this, um, it's simple, it's part of the national infrastructure, it's a culture change, uh, science is driven um, by science, it's informed by data, it's data is preserved by default, data is a first class citizen, uh, data management is taken for granted. Um, the, many of the things that we're talking about here are ubiquitous. Let me just open it up for any either additions to the list, because I only took one thing from each, each table, so you may have some more, or uh, comments uh, that you want to make on what you just heard people report. So hold your hand up and we'll bring a microphone to you. A topic we started getting into but we didn't get very far with is, and I want to pick up, I think it was on Margaret's one, the conversation is about exploiting the data better, not about issues of storage, discovery, et cetera. And I think that's great, except I think the funding agencies want us to have that conversation now and without having dealt with the first step of basic preservation and access. And so we're successful when basic preservation and access is transparent and visible and so forth. But then this taken for granted aspect presents a risk because that infrastructure is only visible when it's broken. And so maintaining the business model and maintaining the um, funding for that and the support for that is a risk. So I think that's a great vision, but we have to be recognized that currently people are more focused on the sexy stuff and, um, and we're trying to raise the fundamentals up to a level of ongoing support. So um, this was partly at the governance session. We had a lot of discussion yesterday that, um, yes, the agencies are clear about wanting to get um, fantastic results with big data, um, but the infrastructure is uh, incomplete, and there's big work to do on storage uh, and so on. So thank you. Other comments? So I'm all for science-driven, but I think I advise some caution in saying what kinds of specific discoveries might be enabled by NDS, because one, we'll probably be wrong. Two, um, we'll set expectations unrealistically, and that will 
lead to doubt about the entire enterprise. And instead, we might focus more on the efficiency of research than any specific research result that we might anticipate. And I speak from experience. <laughs> Good. Other observations or comments? I see a hand here and a hand over here. Yeah, I guess here and then here. Okay. So, uh, uh, just following on what Mark said, I think you know we were talking here about sort of making the, the getting a, a a place to put data and metadata and and more broadly to basically make a uniform way that you get data and metadata out of any existing repository as kind of a one to two year goal so that all of the sexy things can start being built by independent people, right? And that, that's really the, you, you can't take 10 years to solve the basic problem. You need to get something up and then let people show all the cool things that you can do now that you have this infrastructure. And I, I think, you know, discipline by discipline, those are just gonna go crazy if you get this up. Okay, good. Comment here and then a com comment over here. And, and following along, on that uh, topic is, you know, we talk, you're talking a lot about, a lot about the long tail um, data sets, but don't exclude the, uh, the, the established repositories because you know, it's going to be important for NDS to accommodate all scientific findings. And so there's gotta be a method for those repositories to report into uh, a national data service for the metadata that was uh, discussed above. Good. Next. Yes. Um, I, I also think at least for some fields, NDS should think seriously about having ideally quantifiable economic impact. Um, that's certainly in materials and I think other places becoming more and more important to funding agencies and um, might be an important selling point. Yeah, there's, um, in the governance breakout, um, we talked about the emerging literature on what's called collective impact. And there's kind of five elements of the collective impact literature, one of which is measurable indicators of impact. Um, so that's a very important piece of the puzzle. Good. Thanks. What else? I think the other thing I would mention, not forgetting about the existing campus infrastructures. I mean, there's already, there are emerging repositories, there are places on the campus. And how do we integrate that into the whole uh, infrastructure? Good. And certainly we talked about the need to just map the institutional space as part of our current state map. Yes. I just wanted to say that we also discussed um, making it easier for, for researchers and in, in, in general, not just scientists, but humanitarians and other things to trust the data that they're, that they're accessing. As a researcher myself, I think before you trust it, you're actually interested in it. And that's uh, an to issue. What's the data to? So trust it. So trust having appropriate provenance right. and curation and, and understanding where the data came from and uh, along those lines. But there is a serious interest in, or a serious problem with being interested in other people, people's data. And somebody mentioned, not, it's a very good point to not pro over promise and say, oh, we're gonna be able to do these wild things. But somebody else mentioned use cases. And those are really good that we really need desperately to explain. These are really good reasons to save your data because this led to this and this, but they're concrete. They're not pie in the sky stuff. And so that's how you're gonna be able to convince people that it's a valuable thing for them to do. And by the way, use cases is a great example of which everyone nods their head and they all mean many different things in terms of Sorry. what actually constitutes a use case. Sorry, but and, and in this case, I'll clarify that an, an actual discovery that actually happened and yeah. was no, no, concrete. I, I, <laughs> in general, but, but the, the degree of granularity for it to actually constitute a use case varies widely across domains. But nonetheless, um, the point is work from concrete use cases as a way of not over-promising because you can say, here's an example of what we're trying to do. Yeah, good, and that builds interest. Good, any other quick comments? Yes. Uh, the ma in the future, major data initiatives are complementary, collaborative, integrated, and maybe most importantly, sustainable, not three-year projects. So that's a really interesting point in the sense that the culture is both competitive and cooperative. And we're saying that the, among the data initiatives, in a sense, own the culture, change it to one in which 
we're all working together um, in, a, in a complementary, collaborative, and sustainable way. Good. Anything else? Well, Don just kind of took my last one, which was that anything we put in place has to stay there. Um, we can't put it in place for a demo and then move away. We've got to be able to, to ensure to people that uh, it's going to stay there. They can take advantage of it. They can use it. Super. Let me stop here. Make, okay, one last comment. Uh, um, so Lane's comment about data as a first-class citizen might have implied this, but to say it explicitly that also um, the NDS would influence the provost's office and other um, tenure track um, decision-making processes so data is recognized and, and credits given. Yeah, I can tell you as a former dean putting together tenure portfolios and sending them onto campus, if somebody had, I developed this data set, it was reused in these 10 cases, and here's the articles that were published and the impacts that were happened, um, I, I'm not sure how much weight it's been given, but you would definitely want to have it in the portfolio, and over time you would even have mechanisms that you could be more specific about impact and what have you. Uh, so. Thank you for that additional piece. Um, of the puzzle. Um, one last thing before we break. Uh, we actually got a jump start on it. Um, the idea is we have this matrix. I actually converted it into lists because they're going to be separate items. Uh, in the sense that if you vote with your feet after the break and go to a table on data collection, you can then tilted to emphasize astronomy or something, but you're starting off the conversation on one side of the matrix, or if you go to a table on civil engineering, you might tilt it around discovery, but you're starting off on, in that context. So here's the question. We're going to take a different sheet of the flip chart and put each of these words on it and lay it flat on the tables, and uh, when you come back, I'll point to which tables are which, um, and we'll see if we can get a critical mass for you to have a pilot working group conversation. Before we break though, what other nominations do we have for either adjusting the wording of the functional domains or adding to it or adjusting the wording of the disciplinary domains or adding? Social science is not on your list and it's a good model because there is infrastructure there. So, Nice. Yes. These are pretty big categories. Civil certainly can fall within that, but we can have an engineering conversation if we do. Yes? Two issues. Uh, on the functional elements, where does access So is that, Ed, what you meant by linkage, or no? Or is that another category? I don't know. Let's give it a name. <laughs> um, and by the way, if we only have one or two people at a table, they can look for another partner table that is willing to absorb them with their idea into it. Yes? Should I add it to astronomy, or is that mixing two apples and oranges too much? Yeah. Um, Yeah, um, I know space science in that sense is different than astronomy, but I'm going to put them together just for the purpose of this discussion um, in the sense that we're going beyond the planet. <laughs> yes? So we'll put um, all of these words here, um, and the group has license to shape it. In fact, what we're going to ask the group um, is to focus in on a specific potential pilot. So it might have a flavor of one part of this, but we'll get them all in the label. Yes? Um, 
Okay. And again, the groups can add to this. In fact, we're interested to see what the groups want to add to flesh out these, these domains. Yes. a fundamental issue here, which is where does analysis fit in? Where does doing the science, that is not listed as a function. In my experience with SEED so far is that there's a huge tension between people who want to be able to do the science in the repository or in the collaboration space versus I want to be able to find data take it out and move it into an analytical environment, or take the computation to the repository. And I really think we need to be, I, I don't think we can resolve this right now, but we need to be clear whether this is about potential functions for a data management infrastructure or potential functions for a data-driven science infrastructure. So um, in, sp in that spirit, I added a bunch of words. I hope I didn't over add, but I put analysis, use, visualization, computation, modeling. There's a whole series of activities that involve use, so to speak. Um, but the, what? Uh, does that merge with access or no? No, no it's a different conversation. Um, but, but by the way, let me just narrate what's going on. Small, small narration, we're going into our break, big narration, um, is this is actually a crucial conversation because we're slowly building the shared mental model of the elements or domain and dimensions of the space. What we will have at the, when we go into the break is only a very, very rough first approximation, but it's a continuing conversation to refine and shape this in terms of what is the mental map of the categories to organize the way we think about the space. So a crucial conversation. Other edits, suggestions, adjustments, yes? Uh, can we get a microphone? So Ed, with linkage, do you mean um, coordination across Components that already exist, or are you thinking of some other kind of linkage? So I was thinking, we want coordination, but I was thinking of sort of a circuit that allows one to link different things, different objects or publications, and there's not a sort of a linking service of some kind. Okay. No, and Joel's got it. I think coordination, federation needs to be on the list. Uh, so linkage is more the, the user to the data. I was going to say, does that overlap with discovery? Or, but do, should I merge that down with discovery? No? Okay, keep it separate. Again, not everything will get populated, but I did add, based on um, what was just said, this issue of coordination, federation um, uh, among um, institutional actors as a whole other domain, so to speak. Good. Yes. Super. And again, we're, we're in a sense enlarging the words. We'll have to crystallize them back down, but that's helpful. Good. Anything else? Yes. Uh -huh. So feedback, credit, impact, you know, a bunch of things that go together there. Is that fair? Okay. Um, what we now have are 
Um, and I'm going to number these just so that um, we can refer to them more easily, um, is 10 uh, functional areas. And I'm going to letter these. Um, and we have A through H in terms of dissonant planetary domains. Um, we're going to, again, put these on different charts. When you come back from the break, gather around the one that you want to focus on. And if you only have one or two people, yes? So, so, so let, let, let me actually leave that as an option in the sense that if we have three people or four that really want to dive into one of these domains, I think we should let them be more domain specific. But if there's only one or two of you in a domain, you might find another domain and say, let's join you, keep both of our domains in mind and have an end user conversation. So, so I think that's an option. Yeah. Um, so there's an old Yiddish saying that you can a tukus is a rear end. You can only with one tukus. You, you can't with one tukus dance at two weddings. Um, and and so so the answer is you're going to pick a table, and for a half an hour you're going to have a very concentrated conversation. It's going to have an umbrella theme. Once you're at the table, you can with the people at the table shape it. So if you're at one side of the matrix, it will touch certain other dimensions, or vice versa, but you can only be at one table. Um, and again, the task when you get back, and I'll remind you when we come back from the break, is whatever you pick, you're thinking about a one or two year pilot project for which you might actually, with others, be seeking funding that would be deliverable, that would have a clear vision, mission, scope kind of definition, that would have some sense of plus minus or benefits risk, and some sense of timing and milestones. But the idea here is to see if there's a there there on this topic that could lead to a, um, a, build, a building block. So with that in mind, the break is going to be a little shorter, because I still, still think we need to come back. So if it's OK, um, I have that 11 o'clock is about 17 minutes from now. Wherever your watch is at, in 17 minutes, come back in the room. Does that make sense, Ray? Yes. OK, go for it. Ray? I do. I was going to say. So can, can we get help putting? Uh, yeah, sure. That's right. Basically, we need um, really good handwriting. <laughs> I'm sorry. We need adequate handwriting. <laughs> no, actually, we, we, we can't take hands. So, so one person writes down what's on the first So, 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 in fact, um, part of the
back, I'm going to remind them of this. It's okay to say, well, what do you mean by that? Good. Oh, so Ray? Let's do them in order. People come back on this say that's table one, two, three, and you vote with your feet, go to the table, and then you can mix and match. <laughs> oh, so you do get archiving. <laughs> I actually think it's going to draw the most people. Next is data discovery notification. Slide you over yes. just a tad. Try to get as many people in without overloading the meeting. 
Okay, you want to see um, Aaron? There you are. Okay, so let's. Uh, Are you going to talk on top of this one? Yeah. Um, and it's funny because, you know, 20 seconds would feel like forever or not long enough at all. Yeah. Looks like only three Yeah, slides. it looks like only three slides. Oh. <laughs> um, Yo, just start, try it again. Start it over. I, I won't. How about you watch it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks. Thanks, Ray.
Okay, we're going to get ourselves started. If you're working at your computer, uh, close the cover, shut it down, maybe put it back in a bag because you won't necessarily be staying at the table you're at. What you want to do is, at this point, you're voting with your feet. To my left are the tables numbered 1 through 10, you're right, uh, beginning with the first three tables as data collection, publishing, and linkage. The next couple of tables are access, archiving, and so on, data discovery. Notice that we use the word data in front of discovery because discovery means many things. I'll say a word about that in a minute. Um, you'll see there's charts. The key point is <clears throat> if you go to a table and all the disciplines and domains are on your left, my right, um, if you go to a table where there's a topic that draws at least two other people, you've got a group. If there's only one of you, or maybe two of you, see if there's another table that you want to take your topic with and integrate, or go to a second choice. But the key thing is we're forming a discussion group. I'll give you your charge again in a minute, but let's first just see if we have uh, a critical mass on which topics. I'm seeing some people uh, looking very settled at their topic and some people still walking around. If you're still walking around, um, again, if you're shopping, all of the categories are up here. And by the way, if, there's, if you're in a discipline or a domain that you're only a group of one or two, take your, your flip chart and see if there's another group that you want to merge with. Who does not have a topic at this point? Hold your hand up. OK. So let me just make an observation. I see a table to the left here, you're right, on creating data collections that has three people, it's live. I see a table on publishing that has three people, you're live. I see a table on linkage that has two, oh, it has just one. <coughs> um, I see a possible negotiations for a merger between linkage and publications, go for it. Um, I see a table on access that seems quite large and looks like you're ready to go. I see a table on archiving, preservation, curation that looks quite stable. You're go. But listen carefully in a minute when I give you your directions. I see credit and feedback. Um, yes? What? Oh, access. If you want to be a group of two, you can, but that's, you might need a third. You, you might want to see if there's a table that you want to join. It looks like. Does this table there split? What? It's getting really big. Uh, they're passionate on their topic. We're going to let them go. Um, it looks like we have a table over here on um, coordination, federation, alignment. Is that it? This is our institutional infrastructure coming to giving shape and form. Super. It looks like the humanities have come together. This is a. Oh, humanities and social science, a great combination. Could be a college. Um, it looks like we have a table in the back here. What is that space science? Is everything outside the earth? What about here? What do we have? <laughs> Which other tables do we have here? Geoscience has a table. What else? Okay, engineering should find a new, a new best friend. See, see which table you want to join. Okay, if I could have your attention for just two points before you begin. Please, could I have everyone be quiet for one minute? Your ta the first is a cautionary note. I've been asked now twice by people to say that we use the same word and we mean different things. I give you license when someone uses the word to say, well, help me to understand what you mean by that. That's a good conversation to have uh, because we come from many fields and disciplines. The word discovery can mean multiple things. So second thing is here's your charge. For the first 10 minutes or so, walk around the topic. 
Uh, the Native Americans have an expression that the problem is like a pumpkin and you want to walk around and see the pumpkin from all sides before you cut into it. So your first 10 minutes are walking around your particular pumpkin um, to sort of clarify what it means to you and in a sense to articulate vision or scope or what might be a um, pilot project in this domain. It might take 15, but 10 to 15 max. Make sure you reserve the last 10 minutes to be practical. What are some issues about plus minus or timing or resources? So there, there was a question about whether we're doing this sequentially like, you know, columns and then rows or if it's just one and we're done. Um, so the answer is one and you're done. Right, okay. that, that you are picking one cell of the matrix and even that within that cell, a targeted pilot project that it seems to be drawing some energy from the conversation. And because the idea here is that the report out will be in the next six months to a year, here's a tangible thing that we think could be done as part of an, creating a national data service. And some of us at the table actually have some energy to help make this happen. So in a sense, you want to crystallize the conversation and then focus. Make sense? Go for it.
Let me have you pause for a minute and let me just get your attention on two quick process notes. If I could, let me have you pause. First, I just want to give you sort of a 10 minute warning before the end of this session. But the second thing is I'm going to say that it doesn't have to end in 10 minutes. And here's what I mean by that. At 11.30, we're going to do lightning talks for half an hour, and then we have a lunch break. I'm going to suggest that if you would like, when you come back for lunch, have, stay together at, the, at where you are for the lightning talks, but you can continue to have lunch together to continue the conversation. Uh, and at 1 o'clock, we'll have the report out from the groups, like two-minute quick report outs. Um, so the conversation can continue after the lightning talks as well. But just a heads up, in 10 minutes, we're going to pause and go into the lightning talks. Go for it.
we doing?